king loves you the king is in search of you not to hurt you the king loves you he wants to show you mercy he wants to show you kindness where the righteous are safe I cannot be shaken when I'm under your wings I can never be tired of proclaiming your name you're the author of knowledge faith guarantees us permanent access into this marvelous kindness permanent access into the grace of God first Corinthians 11 and verse 28 passion translation so let each individual first evaluate his own attitude and only then eat the bread and drink the cup the key word here is that each individual should evaluate his attitude I've seen that often time as Christians we don't get time to evaluate we don't get time there is a word that the 21st century Christian has left and that word is retreat we know more we consider retreat as withdrawal we consider retreat as backsliding but that's not the essence of retreat Jesus in his ministry at different times he will withdraw himself his retreat he go to evaluate go to review go to look at things again it's very important as we go on I started with this scripture let each individual evaluate his own attitude let each individual evaluate our lives as individual as families as a church as organization evaluate your life companies organization have closed their books most have closed their books this year and what they are doing now is to review is to review is to review how the year has gone how they fit in the year and then they begin to re-strategize so but the first thing from this scripture is that each individual so it's a personal responsibility you must take that personal responsibility to evaluate to evaluate in fact if i'm to put this if i'm to title this series in our palace in pigeon english i would say the topic my series will be how far <laughs> how far because you you need when somebody asks you how far um, on this side of the world they're asking you how have you done how have you fared how are you doing and so that's what we need to ask ourselves and that's what we'll be doing now, please don't forget this scripture it will form the basis first corinthians 11 and verse 28 so let each individual first evaluate his own attitude evaluate his own attitude don't leave it to chance growth is a lifetime journey all our lives we are meant to be growing is a lifetime journey so every now and then we must pause to evaluate review and re-strategize growth is a lifetime journey i think i shared it some in, with some people sometime last week had a case sometime some good years ago had a case a young lady was brought to me and um at the time she ought to be she was supposed to be 28 at the time she was brought to me this was some years ago over 15 years ago she, she was supposed to be 28 at the time she was brought to me but the guardian the person who brought her to me said that while she was 15 she went through some traumatic experience that thought affected her growth mentally so though she was 28 but mentally she was 15 28 every year her birthday was celebrated we mark her birthday but in her mind she was not growing mentally there are people they are growing physically but they are not growing spiritually the challenge we have is that people don't know that spirituality can be measured your financial growth can be measured your physical growth can be measured your academic growth can be measured your social life can be measured all of these things are measurable you can measure them any goal that is not smart 
you know he's not a go it has to be smart so we have to we have to understand that we must at different times in our life evaluate hear me sense 12 months is gone already in 2021 but do you know that there are people that this year will not count there are some years in people's life that heaven did not record it didn't count though man were counting it but before god those time didn't count because it wasn't it, they didn't leave it in line with god's purpose for them at the time so before god it didn't count it didn't count so there are people that this year though we are celebrating end of the year 12 months is gone already 11 months plus 12 years is going 12 months is going already but there are people that have not grown this year praise god so it's very important that we evaluate it's very important that we review and then with that we'll be able to re-strategize praise the lord you cannot assume to be growing you can't just assume you are growing there is something known as stunted growth i've just told you that story now of somebody who was physically 28 but mentally she was 15. so there is something called, known as stunted growth stop growing though time is passing but the person is no more growing that will not be your portion amen god does not expect us our growth to be stunted at any time he expects us to improve increase from time to time proverbs chapter 4 and verse 18 the path of the just is like a shining light it shines brighter and brighter onto a perfect day praise god so there are indices that shows you are growing or not some of us have been doing what we'll be teaching now but you didn't know you are doing what is right but tonight is to get you some confidence to know that you are doing the right thing some of us have not been doing it is to realign you bring you back to where you should be so that your life will count that is the word your life will count amen my life will count your life will count you will not waste time you will not waste opportunities you will not waste opportunities and time that god sends your way praise the lord second corinthians 13 from verse 5 message translation test yourselves to make sure you are solid in the faith don't drift along taking everything for granted i told you earlier you can't assume you are growing you must know you are growing so don't think of anything for granted give yourself regular checkup give yourself regular checkup unfortunately many christians don't give themselves checkups many christians are not can't subject themselves to scrutiny they can't subject themselves to 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 oversight to leadership many can't give yourself to regular checkup don't assume don't assume a lot of christians are assuming give yourself to regular checkup <laughs> you need first-hand evidence not mere hearsay that jesus christ is in you test it out if you fail the test do something about it so it's not don't feel guilty if what we say tonight you know provokes some things in you all you need to do is you do something about it if you doubt if you fail rather if you fail the test it's not the end of the road do something about it do something about it i hope the test won't show that we failed we the instructors we your pastors i hope what we are teaching tonight will not show that you failed but i love how paul continued this he said but if it comes to that we'd rather test we rather the test show our failure than yours we take responsibility and that's why we are teaching hear me we are a strategic church we are interested in preparing you for you to be totally equipped that's what we are doing we are rooting for the truth to win out in you we wouldn't possibly do otherwise we don't just put up with our limitations we celebrate them and then go on to celebrate every strength every triumph of the truth in you we pray hard that it will all come together in your lives and that's what i'm praying for you tonight
that all that we are teaching, all that we are saying, we all come together. You will be the written epistle of what we are teaching. Praise God. Hear me. The reason we teach is so that you become. We teach for you to become. That's what we are teaching. We teach for you to become. So if you haven't become, we will keep teaching. Praise God. We will keep teaching until you become. And one thing we are confident of is that this thing we are teaching is real. It has the power to change a man's life. We are all witnesses of the change the word of God can bring in people's lives. We are all witnesses to that. We didn't come like this, amen? The word of God had changed us. We've been transformed from one level of glory to another. Can I hear an amen? So, on the checklist, let's look at two signs of spiritual growth. Please pay attention to these two signs. It's very important. There are a lot of things we think that make for spiritual growth that does not. But these two things will help you know whether you are growing or not. Number one is the height of your submission to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Number one sign of spiritual growth is the height of your submission to the leading of the Holy Spirit. How you know you are growing spiritually is that you don't struggle so much with the Holy Spirit. There are believers that still struggle. They struggle. They struggle. It's like God will tell them something today. It will take six weeks. They will have, in fact, so do you know some believers will still, will still tell God, if you are the one speaking, let a madman tell me that on the streets. They will still want a mad person to confirm what God had told them. There are believers that God speaks to. They will want to have seven confirmations before they obey. They are still babies. One of the signs of your spiritual growth, that you are maturing, that you are growing spiritually, is the height of your submission. How quick are you to submit to the leading of the Holy Spirit? Romans 8 and verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. I mentioned this to us here before. The word sons here is the Greek word heos, which speaks of matured sons. One translation actually called it mature sons. One of the proof of your maturity is your response time to the leading of the Holy Spirit. The leading of the Holy Spirit. That's one of the things that shows that you are mature. How quick are you to respond to him? Spiritual maturity. The first thing is your submission to the leading of the Holy Spirit. If you are still struggling, if you read Romans, this Romans chapter 8, if you read from verse 1 and get to verse 5 and get to verse 8 and get to verse um, 11 and get to verse 14 and read, it talks about a carnal man, a carnal minded man. And a carnal minded man is a man that goes with his senses. He has not submitted himself. He is not subject to the leading of the Spirit. And Apostle Paul tells us that these two are contrary one to another. So, if you are still in the flesh, if you are still in your senses, you are not mature. You are a child of God, yes. You are a child of God, yes. But you haven't submitted yourself fully to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Galatians chapter 5 tells us that the fruit of the Spirit are made manifest. And it talks about those who walk in the flesh. So there are Christians, they are Christians, but they are not grown yet. Forget the Greek and Hebrew. Forget how much, hey, listen, I'm not in the two, I'm giving you signs of spiritual growth. Speaking in tongues is not one of them in case you are looking, waiting for it. I believe in speaking in tongues is one of the best gifts of grace. But there is something about your submission to the leading of the Holy Spirit that brings you in the level of God. And we must pay attention to it. Checklist 101. How submissive are you? the leading of the Holy Spirit. How submitted, submissive are you? There is how you walk with God and that's where we almost desire to come to. There is how you walk with God that virtually everything you do is by his leading. I'm not saying you must always hear him tell you something. 
that's how you walk with him that even your normal life is God's life your thoughts your thoughts when you are thinking your thoughts is God's thoughts your normal life every, your life you live hear me we live in the spirit as children of God that's how that's where we live it's not something that happens only when we want to prophesy. You know, some people only hear God when they want to prophesy. <laughs> Hearing God is something we should do all. It's our life. It's the way we live. One of the series we took this year was how to hear the voice of God. Hearing God, it should be, is our life. It's how we should live as Christians. So number one sign that you are growing spiritually is the height of your submission to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Number two, is the depth of your love your love revelation and expression two things or two in one the depth of your love revelation and expression of this love jesus said in john 13 verse 35 by this if you read verse 34 he was saying the command the major the main commandment is that you love one another and he says in verse 35 by this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have if you have love one for another by this all men will know that you are my disciples so the second thing first is your submission to the holy spirit and the second one is the depth of your love two ways two the love of the love with siege is in two phases or is in two ways number one is the love of the father your understanding of the love of the father and it has to be by revelation Ephesians 3 tells us that from 14 to uh, 18 and 19 tells us that it has to be by revelation you understand that you are loved unconditionally when you get that revelation the next you get to is the how you express the love of God how you express the love of God how you express that's what tells me or tells us your maturity level that's what tells us your spiritual growth or maturity how you love one another praise God how you love the brethren how you love people how you love people shows us you are growing spiritually an interesting story we have in Joshua chapter 7 Israel by Joshua chapter 6 Israel had defeated had defeated the mighty city called Jericho and he was it was it was it was it was, it was phenomenal it was something that even Israel couldn't believe could happen miraculously God delivered Jericho into their hand and next to Jericho was a city called Ai very small city in fact when joshua sent the spies to go check out ai they told him sir it's too small why are we you don't need to get many people here few soldiers will level this place up and joshua did as instructed joshua chapter 7 and verse 2 and joshua sent men from jericho to ai which is beside beth bethavim on the east side of bethel and spake unto them saying go up and view the country and the men went up and viewed ai and they returned to joshua and said unto him let not all the people go up it's a small place but let about two or three thousand men go up and smite ai and make not all the people to let but peter for they are but few for they are but few so you don't need to over labor don't it will be overkill don't send in much people there send two three thousand people there this place is already taken it's, it's too small compared to jericho we just conquered verse four so there went up Peter of the people about three thousand men and they fled before the men of ai and the men of ai smote of them about thirty and seize men for they chased them from before the gate even unto shebarim and smote them in the going down wherefore the heart of the people melted and became as water 
Now, you know the story. Israel retreated. Israel withdrew. Because this small nation outran them. And Joshua did what we are teaching this time. And that's what every believer must do at every given time. What Joshua did was to retreat. And he went to ask God, why? Why? There are some disappointments you had this year. There are some things that didn't go the way they ought to go in your life. Have you asked God why? I said I was going to say this today. When we started this year, we were asked to write prayer points. I don't know how many of us in church that had duplicates or photocopy of the prayer point that we dropped here. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Do you know many believers had forgotten what they wrote here in January? Many can't remember. They can't remember. By the grace of God, over 90% of the things I wrote had come to pass. Had come to pass. Prayerfully write them. And when things don't go the way they should, ask God why. He will tell you why. Joshua went and said to God, why? What happened? You know, today's believers would have just said, you know, you know sometimes we lose, sometimes we, meet, we, we win. It happens. Uh, do you expect to win all the time? You know, that's what we say. But that's not Joshua. Joshua went back to the drawing board and said to God, what went wrong? Something must be wrong. Because as a child of God, you are not meant to lose. So what happened? Something must be wrong. Checklist. So he began to think, what did we do wrong? What did we do wrong? What did we do right? What was that we didn't get right? And he, the Lord spoke to him, said, there is a curse in the camp. Go and deal with it. Go and deal with it. Remember, the first place we read, 1 Corinthians 11 and verse 28, Passion Translation, let each individual evaluate his attitude. Evaluate your attitude. So what is wrong may just be one attitude, one thing, one thing. You don't correct it and you still put all the prayer points, you move into next year again and you say this prophecy is not happening. This year is literal and not just for us as a church, for a good number of individuals here. Literally is our year of exceeding abundance. God does not, hear me, God doesn't just give word because he's looking for something to say. Anytime he gives a word is because he wants that word to become flesh. He wants his people to experience what he has said. Joshua went and said to God, what went wrong? And God said to him, deal with something in the camp. And that's what I'm saying to us in this series. If there is something you need to correct, evaluate your attitude. There are some things that must not cross over with you. There are some attitude that must not cross over with you. No matter how good you are today, there are things you still need to deal with. And you know what? I've come to understand that some attitudes, God won't even deal with them for you. You deal with those attitudes yourself. Evaluate your attitude. Stop saying that nonsense, that, that, that's the way I am. It's not the way you are. It's the way you choose to be. You can change. I can change. We can change. The only person that is unchanging is God. And you are not one. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So, for Joshua, and that should be for us as believers, that was a lesson. That was a lesson. What are the lessons you've picked up for 2021? Did you, pick, did you learn anything at all this year? Did you learn anything at all this year? No, I've learned some lessons. I've learned some lessons. For every event in your life, you learn or you earn. And sometimes you do both. You earn and learn. That thing you call fail, failure, you call disappointment in 2021, supposed to be a lesson course. 
supposed to be a lesson. You've learned something. Jeremiah said in Lamentation, thank God I was chastised. I was afflicted as a young person. And thank God I got those afflictions as a youth. So you learn something at every event in your life. Learn or earn. So, and I, I see this happen to us many times. Most times I see some people, we sit before greatness. We come in touch with great people. And we, want, we, are, we are all talking, you know. We talk so much before greatness, to impress greatness. When you get before great people, speak less, observe and ask questions. Seek, speak less, observe and ask questions. Sometimes when you go to God, it is not about you speaking. It's about you observing. It's about you asking questions. It's about you just being silent, just being silent and hear him speak. He will tell you what is wrong. He will tell you what to correct. He will tell you what to put right. He will tell you what to do. It goes back to what I, tell, I, tell, I told us earlier about submitting ourselves to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Checklist, checklist, checklist. There are things we must check out. Let me read this passage and then we get to the 12 things we must check out this year. First Chronicle chapter 15 and verse 11. And David called for Zad Zad Zadok and Abiata the priest and for the Levites, for Uriel, Asiah and Jewel, Shammiah and Eliel and Aminadab and said unto them, verse 12, you are the chief of the fathers of the Levites. Sanctify yourself, both you and your brethren, that we may bring up the ark of the Lord God of Israel unto the place that I have prepared for it. Verse 13. For because you did it not at the first, the Lord our God made a bridge upon us. For that we sought him not after the due order. We didn't do it accordingly. Because of that, there was a breach. And you know the story. The earlier time they went, somebody died, Uzziah. Because they wanted to use the cart, the new cart. And somebody died in the process. And on this second trip, David said, we must get it right. Hear me, you, mu you, ca you can't afford to repeat the mistake of 2021 in 2022. No, no. I believe God has taken us through a season, a preparation time, preparing for the big thing coming in 2022. So David said, you did it before, but we didn't do it according to the due order. Let me read it with the Amplified Classic. Amplified Classic. For because you bore it not, as God directed. I love this. You didn't do it as God directed. One of the things we've been teaching and I wanted to pay attention to as we end the year is to get God's directives for 2022. Get the mind of God. 2022 must not meet you unprepared. It can't meet you unprepared. You get, he says we didn't do it as God directed. As God directed. The reason a lot of people are struggling today is because they are not walking in the directives of God. One of the things, I, 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 I dislike that. I'm sure you know it here. I dislike copy, copying everything, copying everything. When people do that, it tells me they haven't spent time with God. I'm not saying you can't do what somebody else is doing. But if God is not asking you to do that and you get yourself doing that, you will struggle a long, a long time. So he says, for because you bore it not as God directed at the, at the first the Lord our God broke forth upon us because we did not seek him in the way he ordained. We did not seek him in the way he ordained. There are a lot of things going wrong. You know, people dictating to God how they will serve God. I've said it here before and, let, and it bears reputation. Not every service is acceptable to God. Not everything you do to God that God accepts. People may applaud. We will take it as a church. 
but God will be saying, you know what I told you. You know, for instance, Ananias and Sapphira, they brought offering to the pastor. And that offering was not small. It wasn't small. So the pastor Peter, Pastor Peter would have said, wow, God bless you for what you have done. But God knew that it wasn't what he directed them to do. These are my 12 checklists for you. And of course for myself, for all of us. Number one, is there something new you started this year? You'll be having, some of them you would pick. And some of them you will rate yourself between 1 to 10. Is there something new you started this year? Maybe a new course, a new program, a new project. Is there something new you started this year? You need to check out these things. You need to check out these things. Don't assume. Remember, growth can be measured. Growth can be measured. Growth can be measured. And it's not just about time. There has to be proof. If in, there are indices. There are things that shows that we are growing. Is there something new you started this year? Number two. Is there something you finished this year? Maybe you started this this year. You also finished it. Or you started the year before. But this year, you are finishing that thing. This is how you measure growth. Is there something new? Is there something you finished this year? Is there anything you finished this year? A lot of people start something but they never get it finished. And it's interested to know that beginners are not rewarded but finishers. So is there something that you will say in 2021 I finished? That's your checklist. Think it. If you did. If not, remember. Remember what we read in um, Second in first in Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians chapter thirteen, Second Corinthians thirteen five five to nine. What we read there, and I said to us, according to Paul' message translation, that in case you find yourself a failure in what we are teaching, put it on us. Don't blame yourself, but do something about it. So, is there something you finished this year? If there is any, if you didn't finish anything this year. Before first quarter next year, finish something. Amen? I've told us this. Hear me. There are courses you can do online. Three months program, eight weeks program, six weeks program. Start and finish it. When the year is finishing, it's an, it's an, I gave us this assignment early this year. And I'm saying it again. If this year ends and there is no certificate to you that this is, I finished this program. Next year, please, before first quarter, Finish something. Can I hear an amen? Yeah, finish something. It's a checklist we are doing. Praise God. Number three. Checklist number three. Is there a spiritual gift you discovered this year? Is there a spiritual gift you discovered in your life this year? Is there a spiritual gift you discovered in your life this year? That's the third checklist I want, I want you to, um, to note. Is there a spiritual gift you discovered this year? There are many spiritual gifts. And one good thing about spiritual gifts is that you can have as many as you want. So is there any spiritual gift? Are there spiritual things, spiritual journey? You've, underta you, you have, you've undertaken this year that you've never done before in your life. Number four, is there any of your 2021 goals that you achieved this year? There are things you set out for yourself. Some will call it um, projections. You call it, give it all kinds of names as the year begins. Is there any of them that you finished. I'm not against those. I'm not against people saying this year I want to do one, two, three things. It's not out of God's mind or will. It's in line. My concern is make sure you follow it through. And the reason most times you don't follow it through is because we don't even have a vision board. There is nowhere where we put that thing and it reminds us daily. There is something about something being on your face every time. There is something about something being on your face every time. So, is there any goal? 
don't be don't be that uh, rolling stone that picks no dust you know you pick something and um, before we could say one two three you drop it you jump onto another one let me talk to my young brothers and sisters my my guys this after this evening so i see that a lot with us young people you know you pick something you're excited you know there are people they start something with all excitement two three months they've lost excitement they are no more excited about it they are looking for something again to start up praise god is there something any of your goal for 2021 you've achieved number five are there contacts and networks you established this year see your net worth your net worth your net worth as a person is as a result of your network your network are there contacts fresh contact valuable contacts and networks that you established this year there are people god has sent your way and you didn't even know see me he listen sense when god wants to bless you he sends people and sometimes they wouldn't come to give you money they wouldn't come to give you money god may send somebody your way you nurture that relationship for seven eight years it's on the ninth year that you begin to reap from that relationship are there valuable contacts and networks that you established this year i learned something some time ago when i meet some people and we exchange contacts that evening or the next day you send them message to say it was good meeting you yesterday you begin to seal listen to me sense relationship must be serviced a good number of us don't know how to service relationship the only time you contact somebody is when you need something it's only when you need something you jump on somebody they will see you as a parasite you know you always come to drink to suck there are people they feel <laughs> i've heard that over time ah that man is too rich what can i give him look at you ah revo is too big man what can i give him continue amen man is rich what can i give him i've realized that wealthy people and you are you are you are wealthy men and women i've realized that wealthy people value and celebrate little things give him that that thing you consider little give it to him but every time you are wanting to expect wanting to receive wanting to receive they will put you on there are some see there are okay but please <laughs> number five are their contacts and networks you established this year and i believe there are there are check them out they are god's blessings to you number six are there books books book book <laughs> books that you finished this year you know i i, I realize that because of the age we are in people no more read books People no more, not students now, not, not your test books and all of that. People no more read books. Because we read social media now create our reality. Hear me, social media is not a real life. Can I say that again to you? Social media is not a real life. They are creating fake lives for a lot of people. And there are books you finish this year check that out it should be on your checklist are there books you finished this year if there are you first should think whether you finished any book this year uh, if there are if um it should be books remember i didn't say book books <laughs> books number seven mm. how consistent we are you in your fighting this year checklist checklist now you know as i was preparing for this teaching and i put this down um some things were coming on my head but he, th this is why it's important that you cons you check this on your list your titan beyond the money beyond the money shows your discipline one of the things titan shows of a person is his discipline 
I had a senior banker, I think he mentioned that in the headquarters church, that her boss in the bank said, anybody who wants to collect loan in their bank and the person is a Christian, all he needs to check is the person's statement. If he notices the person is consistent in Titan, unknown to the person, say he will approve the, the loan. Because if the person is consistent in his or her tithing, it means that this person is disciplined. One of the things your tithing, your consistent tithing shows is your discipline. Discipline. Your discipline. So ask yourself, in 12 months of the year, how consistent were you with your tithing? Checklist number seven. Checklist number eight. Are there family goals you achieved this year? Or you are dealing with your personal goals? Are there family goals that you achieved in 2021? Number nine, how selfless are you? How selfless are you in 2021? It was John who said, I must decrease that he may increase. How selfless are you? in 2021 how selfless are you number 10 checklist number 10 how much are you willing to sacrifice how much are you willing to sacrifice how much are you willing to sacrifice this is what this is what growth is all about selfishness is the one of the characteristics of a child a child consumes what he gets on himself. I'm sure we all know that analogy. You get a little child, now give him a candy. Give a child a candy now. Your candy, you bought the candy, you give to that child. Two candies. And then you turn back and say to the child, give me the candy. The child will be feeling you want to take what belongs to him. And this came from you to the child. So one of the characteristics of a child is that a child is selfish and one of the signs of growth is that you become sacrificial Jesus said to Peter I shared that in one of the teachings this this year Jesus said to Peter when you were a child you went to where it pleases you or where it pleased you he says but as you grow as you become a man you will need someone to lead you meaning as a child when people said to me it's my life let me leave it I don't see a child speaking because a child enjoys so much of independence because he just came out of interdependence so all he wants is when when a child you know how a teenager the moment some of them are looking forward to 18 when they, they get to that 18 it's like a bird out of a cage wow world i have arrived nobody tells me what to do again i am now a man i am a woman they have one language and the language is, I know what I'm doing. My parents don't understand me. Every teenager, I don't know why that happens. And I've, may, may not be every, but most teenagers will tell you that their parents don't understand them. But as you grow up, you realize that independence is not the height of life. You realize that there is a, 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 a higher, light, higher level of life called interdependence. It's a place of synergy. And in that place, what you do you begin to look for people with shared ideas. You begin to look for people you can synergize and sacrifice and then you combine with them because one will chase a thousand and two will put 10,000 to flight. How much are you willing to sacrifice? Number 11, number 11, the 11 checklist. How much are you willing to serve? How much are you willing to serve? I hope 2021 will not leave you not giving yourself to service not giving yourself to service it's been said over and over if service is beneath you leadership must be above you if service is beneath you leadership must be above you i'm weary of people who want to who want to lead and never want to serve <laughs> I 
million of people. You know, we, we live in a time where people are looking for, uh, you know. I was sharing with someone, was it last week or two? The greatest honor I've got, the greatest honor I've got is not preaching. It's not preaching. I mean it. I mean, and I mean it. The greatest honor, the greatest fulfillment I've had in life is not preaching. Beautiful doing that as the Lord enables one. But the greatest fulfillment I've got in my life and I still get today is serving Bishop Michael Konko. He's carrying his Bible, cleaning his shoe, ironing his cloth is the greatest fulfillment I've got in life. Sharing with Dr. Richie. I said, when they asked Elisha, they are looking for a prophet in the land. Remember the story? They're looking for a prophet. He said, can we get a prophet around here? Somebody said, there's Elisha. And the king said, what is resume? What's his CV? Oh, who is he? They didn't say he's the man that got double portion. They didn't say he's the one that raised the dead. They didn't say he's the one that, that man, when he preached everywhere quick, that wasn't what they said. They say he's the one that poured water in the hand of Elijah. Because service, service, service. You know, to, to a lot of people, it's, it's, they, they, they consider it as, um, I mean, we, we, want to, we, we want to be the director. Every director you see today started as an usher, started as a choir member. Every, di- every pastor, you see, when people just appear, I get, I'm careful, I'm worried, I'm, I mean, they, I get worried about them. Because the only thing that starts from top to the ground is the grave. <laughs> it starts top and it ends down, it's grave. Real things start from the roots and they grow. Say those who are planted in the house of the Lord, they are the ones that will bear fruit upwards. So number 11, how much are you willing to serve? Number 12 and the last, how much are you willing to submit? How much are you willing to submit? Philippians chapter 2 from verse 3, Passion Translation, be free from pride-filled opinions. For they will only harm your your cherished unity. Don't allow self-promotion to hide in your heart, be in authentic humility. Put others first. Just mentioned that to you about self, selfishness and sacrifice. Put others first and view others as more important than yourself. View others as more important than yourself. Abandon every display of selfishness. Possess a greater concern for what matters to others instead of your own interest. And consider the example that Jesus, the anointed one, has set before us. Let this mindset become your motivation. Glory to God. Let this mindset become your motivation. He existed in the form of God, yet he gave no thought of seizing equality with God as his supreme prize. Instead, he emptied himself of his own outward glory by reducing himself to the form of a lowly servant. He became human. He humbled himself and became vulnerable, choosing to be revealed as a man and was obedient. He was a perfect example. He was a perfect example. He was a perfect example, even in his death, a criminal death by crucifixion. The further verses, he says, because of this, God had to exalt him. Because of this, God exalted him. Gave him what no man had ever gotten. At the mention of his name, every knee bows. The same way, if you follow this, his example, this checklist, the checklist I gave to you now are from these verses. If you follow this checklist, the same thing will happen. You will be exalted. I don't care how 2021 is ending. 2022, we are coming. It's our year for big things. And it will happen with speed. 
to happen with speed. I'm telling you, don't wait for end of 2022 to evaluate, amen? Maybe, maybe be doing evaluation quarterly. Check your life out. How far is, how far have you gone? How far? <laughs> Good news is that as you are looking at me this evening, you are not where you started this year. You've moved. We've moved. We are not the same place we started 2021. Value has been added to our lives. We become better people. We become quality people. We become better positioned. Now, the you I see, if they hand over a conglomerate to you, you will handle it well. You've been prepared for what is coming. 